When it comes to Battle Angel Alita, on one level, it was absolutely everything I expected it to be. On another level, it was nothing like what I expected it to be. Actually, it was that second one. Much more of the second one. Now this video will be a review of the manga Battle Angel Alita. It will be a review of the entire manga. So I, and I'm going to, I really won't discuss many details, but I'm going to be talking about stuff that happens all the way at the very end. So this is just consider this your spoiler warning for the video right up front. If you haven't read it, I suggest you go read it. I highly recommend it. It was extremely good. If you have read it, stick around. This is going to be fun. Or maybe you're just one of those sick fucks who likes to watch videos about manga you haven't read and just spoil the experience for yourself. I don't understand you. Anyway, like I said, this was pretty much nothing like what I expected. And to be quite honest, I don't even know why I'd bother wasting my time developing expectations for anything at this point. I mean, books, manga, it doesn't really matter. I go into something with, like, ex expectations of any kind, and I'm always just like, what the fuck is happening right now? But anyway, that's, that's beside the point. But in this case, I had actually watched the movie before I read these books. The... Hollywood movie from James Cameron and Robert Rodriguez, not the anime. As a matter of fact, I own the movie and it is one of my daughter's favorite movies like of all time. So needless to say, I have had to watch it many, many times, which is actually not a bad thing because it's a phenomenal movie. It's absolutely excellent. That's another recommendation. If you haven't seen the movie, I highly recommend you go watch it too. It's wonderful. But anyway, combine the fact that I've seen an adaptation of it, and I'm familiar with at least a portion of the story, and you just look through the books and you see the general art style feels a little bit more youthful than some of the other things that I have back here on my shelf. Uh, I expected the story to be much more youthful, maybe, you know, I, I don't want to say like kitty, but much more, say, young adult than what I generally typically read. And in one sense, that is absolutely true. This absolutely feels much more geared toward a younger audience than some of my other manga. And especially in the beginning, it feels much more youth oriented to the point where I was almost like not necessarily fully engaging with the stories and the characters and everything right off the jump because it did feel a little bit more, I don't know, not geared for my age range. But that's not to say that this is some horribly kiddy manga. Oh my gosh, adults can't enjoy this or there's not somehow mature content in this. As a matter of fact, there's shockingly mature content. Like, let's take, for example, the photographer that shows up later on in the manga who is also a serial killer who murders women and then dismembers their bodies so that he could take pictures of their naked and limbless bodies. That's a thing that happens in this. For real. Like, it goes, it goes places. Very dark places. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go ahead and back up a little bit here. Actually, as a matter of fact, I want to back up to James Cameron for a second and talk about him here real quick. Because we're talking about James Cameron. Like, the James Cameron. The number one box office director of all time. He literally has like the number one, number two, and number three biggest box office movies of all time, or something like that. So for him to take this as his passion project and really dedicate like 10 years of his life to attempting to get it made, he was even going to make it himself. But by the time it came time to make it, he was busy doing like Avatar or something. So he handed it off to a different director. He just produced it. Anyway, I just don't know why he chose this particular story. Of all the manga in the entire world that he could have chosen, he chose Alita. And I just don't get it. That's not to say that this is a bad manga. That's not to say that this doesn't deserve to be made into a movie. I'm just saying there's other ones out there, too. I mean, he could have done Akira. That would have been cool. I, I just fail to see the connection between him and the material. Maybe he just thought it was a cool story. I don't know. And actually, to be fair, this doesn't even have an ending. It literally just stops. This is like part one of a much bigger story, I'm assuming, <laughs> because it literally just kind of like stops. So that makes it even more confusing. 
on top of that, the story is so schizophrenic that it doesn't even know what it wants to be for a good chunk of the run. It starts out with a girl being found in a scrapyard, and it's a story about finding family and finding yourself, and then suddenly it's a sports story about rollerball, and then suddenly, fuck it, we're over here, and now we're doing some Mad Max shit. And there is no transition between the sections. It's not like we slowly fade out of this one and into that one, or there's some smooth transition or some foreshadowing or something like that. No, it's like, bam, now we're over here. Bam, now we're over here. Bam, now we're over here. Now we're doing this. You know, it's, 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 it's very jarring to say the least. Also in the movie, Nova and Zalem are very misleading because it seems like at the end of the movie, we're going to Zalem. Also, Nova's in Zalem, and that's just not the case in the manga. Nova's like on the ground, and not only is he on the ground, he's like an outcast from Zalem, on the run from Zalem. So for him to just be chilling up there was very, very misleading. I don't know how they're going to rectify those two. I mean, they did move some things around, actually, in the spirit of moving things around in the movie. They pulled Motorball forward, or Rollerball, whatever you want to call it. Is it Motorball or Rollerball? I don't know, my brain just shut off on me. Anyway, they move the Rollerball forward in the story and overlap it with some of the earlier parts of the story, actually making the transition from the first part into the rollerball much smoother than it actually is in the manga, let me tell you. But anyway, that's really just to say they did take some liberties with the story in the translation of it, but all in all, it's actually a pretty faithful adaptation, to be fair. But anyway, that's enough of that. Let's talk about the actual manga because the first thing that I personally noticed in this was the art. And like I said earlier, I didn't latch right onto the story or the storytelling right off the jump, but what I did latch onto right away was the art. And boy, is the art good in this one. It is, it's got like this real playful style to it, with like this youthful flair added to it. And then there's just this real retro vibe that runs through everything. Like the cars, for example, look like they could fit right into an episode of like Speed Racer, no problem. And then on top of all of that, there's just this real large, heavy emphasis on attention to detail, just real heavily detailed images in general while somehow being pulled back in the detail to be plain enough to have that, that retro vibe to it. I don't know how to explain it. It is hyper detailed when it needs to be hyper detailed and it is restrained when it needs to be restrained. And it understands when to do both of those things, sometimes on the exact same page. All of that's just really to say the art was good and I liked it. And then the story itself, as crazy and as bombastic and as schizophrenic as it was, it really does eventually settle into itself about, I don't know, maybe halfway through. Hell, maybe it was just me. Maybe I just eventually settled into the story. But about the time that she leaves the city entirely, it starts to really feel a lot less jerky and a little bit more cohesive as it goes through, I don't know, the second half of its run. Also, this manga takes place over a surprisingly long period of time. Like, this takes place over the period of like 10 or 20 years or something like that. Which, with how much this jumps around and how jerky it feels and how much action is baked into it and just how short the manga is, it makes it that much more impressive what he's able to do with her character and her character arc throughout the story. I mean, we get this whole little, like, birth phase of her with a discovery phase of her, then this, like, bratty, rebellious phase, and then she eventually goes off on her own, and then she's going to be separated from Ito, and then she's going to become a, a, like, a, a agent for the city. Then she's going to end up fighting against that. It's like there's all these little, like, arcs that she gets 
all of this progression in a, such a condensed period of time, and it still feels so full, the story, and fulfilling as you read it. It is shockingly impressive what he's able to do with the amount of time that is given. I mean, I think this is only like nine volumes total. I guess I'm just saying the, the development of her character, the arc of her character, it all felt so well developed and everything that she does and goes through felt very, very earned. And that's just her. On top of her, we have so many other really colorful characters that kind of come in and out of the story as you go. Ido just being one of them. Actually, a couple other stands out other than him is that little girl that is her handler up in Zalem and Chaos. I really liked those three people as like ancillary characters. Wonderful. And then, of course, like any good manga or anime, as it goes towards the, you know, second half, even close to the end and the climax of the story, it's going to stop focusing so much on action, or even if it is in the middle of action, it's going to start really leaning heavy into the speeches and the philosophizing and looking into the motivations of all of the different characters that make them do what they do, think what they think, what makes them think tick why they are doing what they're doing and it's just fascinating you will get from chaos spouting some of his whatever he's spouting to oh god what's that guy his alter ego and why he's waging the war that he's waging all the way over to nova and why nova's doing what he's doing there is no such thing as like a cookie cutter bad guy or just a cookie cutter character in general you will get in-depth understanding of absolutely every single person and they are all very real fleshed out characters i mean it's not like they're pushing it so far that you're questioning who the good guys even are they're just like making sure you understand the underlying motivations of the actual villains and they're just very well developed and i know that i said at the beginning of this that this doesn't even have an ending but that's not true because it really does i mean i knew you get at the end like oh psych the bad guy's still alive ha 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 that kind of a scene but other than that it really kind of does give you a nice little ending and i know that the most resolution that we get out of the main plot of the storyline is we now have a plan to move forward and we're going to connect the ground to the bottom of zalem and build a tower but as far as alita is concerned she's grown she's developed she's grown into a real person she's content with where she's been and what she's done and now she's gonna take a break and she's gonna go off to that little village and she's gonna go visit figure four and if it weren't for that little pop-up scene of nova popping up like haha i'm not dead yet god guess what um it would if he wouldn't have been there is what i'm saying is it would have felt like a quite satisfying ending even if the story didn't feel a hundred percent capped off it would have been I would have been very satisfied. I would have been satisfied with the development of her character, where she goes, where she ends up, and where she's off to at the end. It felt good, and it felt satisfying as an ending. I know that's not the ending. I know there's still more, and I know I don't know where this is going to go from here. I haven't read that far. But as an ending to this, if it had ended here, I would have been fine with that. I think it was a good story right there in and of itself. And all in all, I thought this was absolutely wonderful. I had a great time with it. I don't know if I think it was quite as good as some of the things I've read about it. I think I saw on the YouTube that if somebody said that it was like the greatest female protagonist in all of manga. I don't know if I'd go that far. I mean, this is actually kind of the only one I've ever read, but I've watched a lot of anime. Like, what about the major from... You know, Ghost in the Shell. I haven't read that, but I've seen all the animes, and she's wicked. Uh, even the back of this says, Battle Angelita is certainly one of the greatest and possibly the greatest of all science sci-fi anime manga series. That's a, that's, that's a big... I'm not 
I'm going to say no. I mean, that's a lot. You're saying a lot. Now, if it would have just said possibly one of the greatest or one of the greatest, I would have been like, sure, whatever. But possibly the greatest? Not, not even close. Like, I got Blam back there on the shelf. It's definitely better. Um, like, it's not, that's not, that's, who said that? Anime News Network, get the f*** out of here. How much did they pay you to say that? Hmm? I work, that's like a real Stephen King blurb. That man will say anything crazy to get his name on the back of a book. Shame on you, Anime News Network. Anyway, I would say it's a real solid 7.5, maybe an 8. Um, in that range, I would, I would feel comfortable with it sitting on either one of those two numbers. Anyway, everybody, as always, the link for my Patreon's in the description below. The link for my Discord's in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.